Center giving you a great look at that bit wing design the Chance Vought came up with. With the original design of this airplane, there was a problem that the designers came into, and the problem was, was the fact that that giant propeller, some 13 feet, was very close to hitting the decks of those straight decked carriers back during World War II. What they needed to do is get landing gear tall enough and high enough in order to keep those props from striking the deck. So what they did was go through a variety of various testing, and what they found out was that they could actually bend the wings, providing them lower so they had a shorter landing gear. And what they also found is it created more lift as well. It made it aerodynamically efficient. And of course, the Corsair going on to be one of the most prolific fighters in the Pacific theater. show center starting and stopping the aircraft at the same airspeed the same altitude and the same heading a challenging feat especially with these low clouds aerial victories in air combat with only 189 losses. It did especially well against those Japanese Mitsubishi Zeros with a killer ratio of 12 to 1 on that type. The Corsair also dropped more than 15,000 tons of bombs during the war, a figure approximate to 70% the total number of bombs dropped by U.S. fighters in World War II regardless of theater. Continuing to showcase the excellent performance and majesty of the Corsair, Lou Horschel, and the FG-1D. This weekend. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Luke, and what a way to kick off the weekend. What an incredible performance there, and it's always great to go back in time for a few minutes and check out these beautiful aircrafts. Indeed so, turning back the hands of time to the 1940s, the 1950s, and uh, see these airplanes. And I should make mention for those in the crowd that may not know, these vintage World War II aircraft are civilian-owned. 
and they fly these airplanes much on their own dime with their own fuel that they purchase and they maintain these aircraft and it helps us tell the stories of our veterans and uh, all of those who serve and they're, they're truly living monuments, if you will, of American history. I love that they honor our veterans, number one, and I was thinking that while they were flying just how much upkeep these aircrafts probably take and to keep them so beautiful and able to fly at all the air shows all over the country is absolutely incredible. So a huge shout out to them. That was a great way to kick off the show. Indeed so. Lou Horschel landing there, the Corsair. Corsair first took flight in May of 1940. Chance Vaught aircraft designed to build an airplane not only to be fast, but highly maneuverable. The Corsair proved to be in the right hands an incredible angle and about carrying a combined successful naval aircraft of a generation. As Lou pulls back on the stick, you hear that growl of that 2,000 horsepower Pratt Whitney double wasp engine. The R-2800, one of the most powerful and largest capacity power planes day, capable of speeds in excess of 400 miles per hour. Trading that altitude for airspeed, Lou pulls back once again as he flies the Corsair into the vertical. Lou is now performing a classic aerobatic There, an American pilot, Lip Covey, was performing an aerobatic display in a biplane where he pulled up into a loop and realized that he was too low at the loop to successfully pull out of it. So instead of unpleasantly making a handshake with the ground, he opted to form a 5 8 loop, just as Lou has, and rolled 180 degrees upright, doing so again, striking the ground. Give Lou Horschel a nice round of applause as he completes the Cuban Eight. Trading that altitude for airspeed, airspeed for altitude in this time for the precision four point hesitation roll. served proudly in the Korean War as well, proving itself a worthy opponent against Russian-built MiG jet fighters, being flown not only by the North Korean pilots, but also World War II veteran aces. It was on September 10, 1952, that Lieutenant Jesse Pulmore, flying a night fighter version of the Corsair, shot down a MiG-15, showcasing that though the jets were in, the Corsair continued to dominate the sky. And now for the very graceful barrel roll as he uses the elevator to do the odds in the rudder. The rear wheel is going to be around the back of the split. The rear wheel is 600 rolling maneuver. whistling through the 50 caliber machine gun ports on the wings. Ben Wingberg, also known for going down in history, is one of the most legendary warbirds of the Pacific Theater. Again, running in once again from our right, the power of 2,000 horsepower and the Goodyear X1D Corsair. has over 1,000 hours in the Mustang as well as the Corsair and loves nothing more to share this beautiful piece of American history with all of you here today.
facts and figures surrounding the Corsair service were staggering. The Corsairs fly more than 64,000 sorties between the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps, and they accounted for more than 2,100 victories in air combat with over 180 losses. They did so exceptionally well. Corsair also dropped more than 15,000 tons of bombs during the war, a figure approximate to 70% the total number of bombs dropped by U.S. fighters in World War II, regardless of theater. Shaw at the controls, and we'll be setting up for him here in just a couple of short moments. With many of the aircraft built during World War II, including the Corsair, many of them were known as tail wheel airplanes. And simply what that meant is that they had main landing gear there on the front and a little tail wheel there at the back that made for some pretty interesting times, especially on land.